Well, today on Nation, we're talking to the one and only Edere. You've heard them, you use them, you probably love them as much as I do. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? Thanks for coming and checking us out. If it's your first time watching, have a look around. Hopefully this video doesn't suck, and hopefully it's better than a cat video. Uh, we have 180 episodes. It's been going on for three years, every single Friday, so you have tons of content to catch up on. Go back, watch it, binge it, and if you do binge it, make sure to let me know how many episodes you watched in a row or listened to. Uh, more importantly, if you watch or listen, you thumbs up and you order your supplies through me, uh, shameless plug time, what's up? It's because of you that I get a brand name sweatshirt that's a free sweatshirt, so thank you. But I do really appreciate it. I wanna be everybody's rep, so if you have any need for supplies, do let me know. 862-312-2026 is a cell. Call me, text me, whatever. Jersey, everything's in your cart. Tell me that, and I can certainly put that in for you. I do text all this thing every single day, so thank you guys for very for letting me do that. And uh, one other thing, I want to give a couple quick shout outs. Chris Chambers, what's up? Chris Johnson with a K, what's going on, man? And Stuart Craig, what's up to you guys? By the way, if you want a shout out or the super awesome limited edition sticker for Cool Kids Certified, let me know. Anyway, the plugs are done. And like I said, we are talking to Edere. And uh, Wayne, how's it going, man? It's going well, actually. In spite of all the things that we're all having to deal with, it's uh it's been quite a year, but but we're we're rocking and rolling and and trying to finish this year and make some sense out of what the heck's <laughs> gone on, you know. I would you could have, you had me at just finish the year. Let's just finish the year and like you know washers. Okay, yeah. great. It burn everything that says twenty twenty on it and uh, start fresh. Yeah, move forward. Yeah, no kidding. Well, yeah. if anybody doesn't know Edere, a I can't believe you're a window cleaner without knowing. But tell us all about your company. Tell us about who you guys are, what you do there. Just tell us everything. Sure. Yeah. It's um, you know, we we've been. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to, I'm just trying to think this through, but we're probably the oldest window cleaning manufacturer out there, um, at least in this country. Um, maybe not. But um, anyway, founded in 1936 by a guy named Ettore Stacconi, which is obviously where the name came from. Italian immigrant who came to the, to the States, didn't speak any English, didn't know what else to do, but he washed the windows at home and figured he could do it here and went around on his Indian motorcycle and, and carried a ladder and rode around and cleaned windows. Um, that was basically his deal. And um, over time, like most window cleaners, he found some issues that he didn't like with some of the tools, went back to the suppliers of the time and tried to get them to change. And nobody listened to him. So he sat down in this basement in Berkeley, California, actually, and basically drew plans, went to drafting school to figure out how to do this basically invented the squeegee as we know it and we we actually have the patent still sitting in our in our we call it our museum room but um you know that kind of a thing and you know that so and we make a lot of other things than just a squeegee now but um so so two things one um all of our products are made by window cleaners including the first one which was made by somebody who cleaned windows for professional window cleaners. Virtually everything we manufacture is, is that way. His, his um, daughter actually ran through the business. She's still here. Actually, she's still kind of running customer service chairman of the board. So if you call up Edere, the 1-800 number, you're likely to get Diane Smolik, which is Diane or um, Edere's daughter. And her son is, is president of the company. So it's still family run by the same family. They take that heritage very seriously. And we make window cleaning tools invented by professionals for use of professionals. That's our, that's our motto. And we unashamedly make the best tools in the industry. Rubber, handles, whatever you want to call it. You know, it's, and I know there's probably a few people that might have some arguments there. I, I, I offer the challenge. You know, we, can, we can talk about that for sure. But whatever we make, it's the best in the industry. And that's, that's who we are. Yeah, yeah, I have uh, two things. First off, I hope everybody who's watching and listening, it's pronounced Ettore. So every time I've corrected you, I'm sorry, but I was right. It's Ettore. It's not Ettore or all the other uh, different versions. Um, and then the second thing is 
if anybody's seen a logo, it's a guy on a motorcycle with a ladder. And I think he's looking back at a dog, right? Yeah. Maybe that's yeah. literally a logo that was kind of created from the original. Yeah, that's that what he did. So one, one of those weird things on the site, cause we get that a lot. We've been, you know, that's been around a long time. The dog wasn't at a race. That was actually the artist who drew that picture. He always oh. threw his dog into the whole thing. <laughs> the motorcycle and the ladder and all the other stuff is, but the dog was kind of thrown in there. But just for those, that's one of those trivia things that we get a lot. So that, that would be something we can throw out there. Yeah. And if uh, people don't know the story either, is that in order for Ettore to uh, actually sell, because they kind of didn't want to sell it, there, there's a hat story, which you still have the hat there in the museum. But uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, no, that, 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 that actually is a, is a fun story because it, you don't hear that really anymore, um, at least too yeah. much. So he, um, you know, invented the squeegee, went, you know, went back and forth, went to suppliers at the time and basically tried to sell it to them. One of them happened to be in New York. I won't mention who it is because they're still around, but, um, um, and went, basically sat down with them and said, okay, I have the best tool in the industry. It's invented. I invented it. Again, broken English because he didn't speak English well. And uh, again, the feedback was, you're an idiot. Like nobody needs new tools. What we have is fine. You don't need any of that. So he said, okay, I'll make you a wager that at the end of the month that every one of your customers will call and beg you for this squeegee. This is basically the best tool in the industry. And, and the wager is the finest hat in New York City. That was literally the request yeah. that was done. That, that was so a big it, deal. Oh, sorry, sorry. So what he did obviously to do that was went around to all the window cleaners, let them use the tool. And, and they all basically did it. And they in fact did call them. And so we proudly display the hat in our, in our museum. Um, yeah. Kind of a fun story. But, you know, a lot of companies uh, started with bets. You can name several of them. And, and Adder is no exception to that. Yeah, that's crazy. It's uh, a different time. And that's kind of what we're talking about. But by the way, we talked about this a little bit beforehand. But there's very few things in our life that we've you've hit the mousetrap, right? It's the the thing that was created that then can never be toppled. Like we hit that now with like an MP3, MP4, whatever. It's mm -hmm. like there will never be. We went through records, you know, eight tracks, records, cassettes, uh, CDs, mini discs, and then we got to this, and now we can't go anywhere, right? That's kind of what happened with like the squeegee. Like there's like innovations, maybe some little tweaks here and there, but like the rubber, the original squeegee, like that stuff is like that's 1930s and it's still used every single day. Right. Yeah. It, um, the, you know, and, and, you know, to be fair, it's not exactly the same formula that he had in 1936. There, yeah. there have been some progression in, in some of that, but in general, you know, and, and I know we've talked about this before in, in other kinds of video things that we've done, but the, uh, you know, we, you know, there's, we are the target of anybody who comes into the industry and I want to make squeegee rubber we're the target like we I'm, whatever i'm going to do i have to beat that array and so yeah. like we get the, every year there's at least three or four where somebody comes out with some new thing that's gonna that's gonna work and that's what competition's about and that's a great thing um we a long time ago during our formula research figuring that out looked at multiple different things and obviously weather temperature heat humidity water soap whatever you're going to use has an effect on the rubber that you use and a lot of companies now have, have a winter blend and a summer blend, kind of like fuel. And you have a soft rubber and a hard rubber, depending on what the temperature is. And so we, you know, we looked at all of that initially. This was years ago. And basically decided that you know, if, we, if we make the rubber pliable enough but stiff enough, it won't matter. It'll, it'll work in either one of those scenarios. And obviously, if it's freezing, freezing cold, like minus 12 rubber is going to be a little stiffer than it would be if it was 80. Yeah, yeah. But it's still a pliable, I mean, rubber, it's not, doesn't have water in it. it. It basically doesn't do that. All it does is stiffen up a little bit. Same thing with heat. If you're in Arizona, it's 126 degrees in the sun or in the shade and, and work with it. The rubber isn't going to melt off the squeegee. It's basically going to work that way. And so we have just opted that we don't need to have two and it just causes confusion for people that are buying it. So at what point do I need the stiff rubber versus the soft rubber? Is it 68.6 degrees or no, you just use this and it'll work fine. It doesn't really matter. So that that's kind of the thing. And, and we obviously look at the formulas. We do look at our competitors rubber to see, because you know, you never know um, people yeah. have good ideas and 
We've never found in a whole lot of years, we've never found anybody that's even come close. Nice. And that's one thing that I think is awesome that this is like some salesman nerd stuff, but like the, the, the rubber is called master rubber. Like it is the master rubber. Like that's right. just what it is. You know, people yeah. are like, Oh, I'll, I'll do some Metairie hard. No, it's, it's master. You get one. It's, it's mastered. Yeah. It. it doesn't matter. Right. Well, no. And, and that's, and that's part of it because everybody, you know, in order to compete, they had to come up with several different blends and they still can't make it. So it's anyway, it's a, uh, yeah. It's there. And, you know, it's something we're proud of, obviously, um, that's there. That, that's, uh, that's kind of our, of our, you know, razor blade on the Schick razor. You know, that's kind of, yeah. the, that's yeah, kind yeah. of the thing. And, and we do it well and we still do it well. So that's, that's there. What's crazy too, not to keep sticking on rubber for anybody listening, but uh, uh, not only do you guys like inspect every piece by hand, which is just crazy to me, but rubber itself in the industry is, a pricey thing like people think when they call like, oh man what rubber cost what is it you're talking you know there's certain rubbers that are out there that are uh let's see we're talking four dollars a piece on some rubbers like yeah. people go oh man oh god it's like there is no huge profit on rubber is a natural product it's expensive right. it's not only is it natural but it's also protected in a lot of areas it's very very regulated because of how it is harvested and it's just one of those things that I'm very glad that I'm not in the rubber business just because there's so many things that go with it. But a lot of people don't understand how much work really goes into having something be actual true rubber. Yeah, no, it, it, exactly. So that, you know, and there's something we, we, we get a request a lot because today you see, you probably sell quite a few that they have like different colored versions mm -hmm. of the rubber, you know, you have a green one or a red one or whatever. So just to dispel all those myths, if, if it's got color in it, it actually isn't rubber. Yep. rubber has to be black because of the way the rubber you know it's charcoal that makes it that and that's the flexibility i'm not going to get into the formula but the black is charcoal that that's basically and if you don't have charcoal in it then it's not rubber it's it's some other material yeah. it can have bits of it in it but it's it's basically not that um a composite that 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 kind of a thing and and you know yes our rubber is hand, hand inspected we manufacture this in California, the most expensive state wage wise, everything else wise. So, you know, I, all of that is there. that that is in the cost. I mean, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm not going to lie and say, oh, no, no, we don't pay our people anything. They all do this for free. They don't. You we know, don't it's, make it's a profit. Part of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, definitely part of that. But, but um, you know, basically the way and you're right, I, we've had people argue to the death about I can't believe you're going to raise that four dollar rubber to four dollars and eight cents i mean that's crazy it's gonna put me out of business i mean i, yeah. I we've heard this for oh, yeah. years and years i know you know exactly what i'm talking about and you know our, our comeback to that is you know that's fine i understand things unfortunately go up costs rise you know whatever um, a lot of it is totally out of our control but if you if you, even if you think it's four dollars is actually pretty expensive but if it was four dollars for a piece of rubber you're a window cleaner and you're billing a thousand dollars a day or whatever yeah. it doesn't even matter two hundred dollars a day five hundred dollars a day wh whatever that amount is and you use that four dollar piece of rubber that's earning you thousands of dollars it's not that expensive no no and and, and that, that's kind of the way you know yeah okay so it, yes it went up eight cents on on that particular slice of thing i mean you could you could raise your margin a little bit maybe depending on where your market is and all the other stuff but again at the end of the day that eight cents extra is earning you thousands of dollars so oh, it's yeah. really not that expensive when you add all that together yeah and I, I when i first started in sales now this is a few years back i remember the big the first thing that really was like here's a kick in the growing this is what sales is is i had lost a, a sale part of the sale because somebody else's 12 pack of rubber uh was a dollar 10 less so they ended the sale and went to buy it from them yeah. I was like, okay, so it's a dollar yeah. ten. You're gonna go spend more. Time. But anyway, right. that that goes right. kind of back to that. But well, no, it doesn't. Have... And, and I mean, and, and some people will do it for a dollar ten when you're talking yeah. about you know, that kind of a thing. And it's like, well, good luck. But yeah. you know, our 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 argument to that one is, I mean, that's fine. You you're free to buy whatever you want. That's not an issue. However, out of that dollar ten that you're talking about, how many times do you have to go back and reclean that window because the squeegee wasn't perfect yeah. and you left a streak? You've yeah. one mess and you've, you've, you've made up that dollar 10, you know, right there. 
Mm -hmm. And, you know, and not everybody thinks that way, but it's like, I mean, you're running a business. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Like I said, we make products for people to make money in their business. That's, that's what we're doing. And it's like, that's everything we make is geared towards that. Yeah. It's nuts. But so you guys have been in business long enough to kind of see innovation and changes and things. And we were talking a bit before, I really did like what you were saying there is that people nowadays, the difference between then and now is then people were just used to, I work with my hands, right? Mm -hmm. I, 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 you know, uh, deal with uh, horses or wagons or farms or, and I would deal with my hands. Now things are changing where all of a sudden people don't want to work with their hands anymore. They want to get paid a million dollars an hour to go sit on a computer and type away. Like, how yeah. is that changing the industry? Like, how are, do you see things changing on that side of things? Yeah, it, you know, it, it's interesting and it is changing. There, there's no, you know, you can, you can say what you want and, you know, you hear, you know, millennials are lazy. There are countries doomed. It's not, you know, you hear all these things all the time. I don't think that's true at all. I, I think there's, there's definitely a shift, but um, it, it um, you know, it's not any different now than ever in one sense that, that people will go where the easiest way is to make a living. Yeah, whatever that is. And, you know, I mean, you can go back to the, you know, the depression, people would travel from, you know, New York to Washington to work on a, on a, uh, what do you call it, a dam to, to do different things, because they actually paid to do it. And they did, and they took yeah. up their whole family and took off. And, you know, you, you look at that today, and you go, who, nobody would do that. Like, that's crazy, <laughs> you know, whatever. But it's like, they did. And it's really no different now. So it's like, okay, you can, you can, work with your hands and do those other things and make, you know, whatever, $50,000 a year, or you can learn some other things and make, you know, 400,000, just make enough numbers, but I mean, yeah. you know, a whole lot more money, you know, doing things, well, people will do that. And the interesting thing is what, especially this year, um, we talked about this a little bit as well, but so this was obviously a unique year for everybody. Like I've never gone through this before. You certainly haven't gone yeah. through it. So you know, we're locked down, we have this thing, what do we do? Well, we still need to eat, you still have kids in school, you still need to, to do what you need to do, and you find a way. And, and that's kind of what this industry did. And, um, you know, there are some companies that were really, you know, okay, so high rise buildings, downtown New York, they're still not open, like, how, what is it 20% of the capacity in New York City is has people in it. the rest of it is, you know, they're vacant. Well, obviously, people aren't spending a lot of money to clean the outside of the windows on those buildings because they're not even full. So those companies have found other things to do and it all it's cleaning and it's all the same thing that they're doing, but it's okay. We're going to go in and sanitize a building. It's very different than what I was doing, but we, we got to eat, we got to do yeah. these things. And so in the window cleaning industry, it, it's, it's basically the same thing. It's, it's, there are always those people that, you know, you know, I, I don't like computers. I don't like sitting down and staring at things, you know, whatever. Yeah, I can make more money, but I just, that's just not what I like to do. Yeah. And window cleaning, and I know you can, because we've laughed about this, but window cleaners are unique individuals, very entrepreneurial, very, I want to control my own destiny. I want to, those people aren't going away. Like yeah. they, they may do different roles in their lives, but it's, it's, you know, no one's going to tell me how to make a living and earn a living for my family. I'm going to do that myself that's the window cleaner and those guys whether they're cleaning windows laying brick concrete whatever they're going to do that and and yeah. so and you know sometimes they don't even know that those people but but they are and so that's 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 what we're seeing is is slightly different people coming from different backgrounds maybe but in general you know those entrepreneurs are still there and they still yeah. don't want to be told what to do yeah. Yeah. And I think that's interesting when you talk about buildings, like everybody can work from home now. Why does anybody have built? Like, how is that landscape going to change as far as like office buildings? Like maybe a year from now when everybody's leases are up, it's 50% occupied because people go, they can just work from home and I can save, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in having the, the lease and rentals and everything else. So right. stuff right, like exactly. that's really, yeah, really going to be and, interesting. And, and it's one of those things in our society at this point is, you know, so let's sit down. What's that going to be in five years? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. We don't know what that, are people going to go back to the cities? 
probably in some way. I, you know, I don't know, but it's gonna be it's, different. We just don't know. I mean, we're all locked in. We're we're at home. Weather's getting cold. I don't want to be driving anymore. The only good thing about all this is traffic has been awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. I, uh, being somebody who works from home, when, when this all happened, everybody goes, oh, yeah, well, how's, how's, how's it been for you? I'm like, nothing's changed. I, my gym closed in the morning. I, it's all I, that's all the thing that happened. But, yeah. but speaking of like the, the present and kind of how that is, is like there are so many people who are out of work, or I should say were, right? It, it came really hard there more in the beginning, but mm -hmm. so many people out of work, and a lot of them went, hey, I used to clean windows back in college, or I did yeah. this, and I want to do this. And now, like, all of a sudden, there was like a boom of new business. But I felt like that was almost washed by the, the drop in business of some people who just maybe didn't quite make it through that. And I mean, what do you see right now? Is it, it have things picked up because there's so many new window cleaners in there? You know, have they gone back to doing their normal job? Or, or what are you seeing market-wise, like the current day? Yeah, no, that's actually a really good question. And I, I mean, I'd lie if I could make something up. But I mean, it, I, I don't know that we have that full picture yet because yeah. it's still happening. Um, we're still working in this. But, you know, for sure, it, you just reminded me of a story. Um, Ettore, um had the saying right when he started this whole business that window cleaning is one of the only industries where you could literally parachute into the middle of a city or middle of a town or middle of whatever with no money and no anything. And by the end of the day, you could stay in the nicest hotel in town and have a steak dinner and everything would be fine just by two tools in your hand and a little bit of water. Yeah. We've actually done that over the years as marketing campaigns where we've done that and went, okay, we're going to, we're going to have a contest. We're going to take you, we'll pay for the, you know, we're going to take three window cleaners and plop you in downtown Chicago oh, wow. and go nuts. And whoever has the most money at the end of the day wins. And it's totally doable. Like it's wow, it's it's one of those cool. kinds of things. So that that's a prime example. We've definitely seen that. And um, you know, I mean, a, a lot of people. Some people definitely have, have lost work, and a lot of people have gone back to work. But there's still people that haven't. You know, that that are part of that. And yeah. I don't. Like I said, I I don't think. You know, we mentioned this earlier. Right now, the window cleaning business is kind of back to normal. And, and, you know, I say that because some of the people watching this are like, you're an idiot. It's not normal. I'm not doing anything in the high rise. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's not normal, normal, but I mean, in other words, getting there, the number of things that, that we're selling and people that are earning a living, it's kind of going back to what it was. Um, but we're, you know, I mean, I know Chicago this weekend went back to, you can't go in a bar, you can't go in a restaurant, yeah. you're, you're locking this thing down. New York's definitely done that places all over the country are kind of shutting down again. So it's like, okay, so are we now not doing anything again? And, and are, are more people going to be laid off? Because I don't think we have that full picture either. You know, the travel industry is being devastated right now. What are they doing um, yeah. for work? And, and um, you know, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things that, that are moving. But definitely, you've definitely seen the independent window cleaner that, you know, is going up doing flyers in neighborhoods. That's yeah. definitely picked up there's no question about that you yeah, doing a high-rise building there's a little training involved there you can't just hey i can do this now you know it's not yeah. necessary hey i got a rope yeah let me yeah i know exactly yeah. yeah you know what's crazy is that and everybody's watching listening i i tell you that every time like if you're taking the time out of your day to watch a podcast about the business or industry that we're in to make yourself better you are so much farther ahead than anybody else that's around right you're yeah. you're the, the one that's not failing you're not going to have issues. Maybe there's going to be some headaches, but you're taking that time to reinvest in yourself. That's that fire you're talking about inside somebody. Like mm -hmm. they have that as entrepreneurs, just in general, like you can't extinguish that. I mean, we get beat up like nobody else in business. I mean, yeah. there are good times and there are very, very bad times and you have to be a certain kind of person. There's just yeah. people who can't kind of hike it that way, you know? No, that, that's exactly. And it's, you know, I, I always call that it's the, it's the find a way. Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't know, but you know, it's, it's, you know, that you can set up your territory and your route and you can do all this whole thing. And then, you know, a hurricane comes through and wipes out the neighborhood and your whole route's gone. What do you do? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to sit around and cry about it. I got to go find another neighborhood. I mean, Pivot. that's what you do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, you know, that's, and sometimes that's hard. A lot of times it's hard, but it's rewarding. It pays off. And, and, uh, and again, it takes a special special kind of a person and that's why really i think that you know we mentioned this before i think that's why we like this industry is 
you don't have people that are apathetic about our careers. Like people are like, I love window clean. This is, I love this. You guys are awesome. I mean, you don't get that in other industries. If no. You get that in window cleaning. What's crazy is there's like this culture and this is, we talked about the past and present too. And there was this uh, uh, thing forever that there, there's this change in the industry and it is the old for the new. And it's kind of that like people, right? Like when I first got into window cleaning, I went to Gary Maurer's picnic. You probably remember Gary. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a picnic in Oconomowoc. It was the only thing that existed. I mean, IWCA shows were going on, but it was like, you know, yeah. it was the, the state. Yeah, that's right? different. That, that's a totally different thing. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and you would go to these and you would see everybody there. And I was this young punk kid and I show up and I'm like, ah, everybody around you was 50. Like mm -hmm. there was like one 30 year old, but everybody was just an older generation. Yeah. And you're seeing it now where these younger guys and I sound super old now that I'm 39, you know, it, but it, these it, younger guys goes faster. Just so you Oh know. my God. You're <laughs> telling me, uh, by the way, on a side note, my wife said to me uh, yesterday, she goes, you know, next election, your daughter can vote. I was like, oh, don't, yeah. don't tell me that she just turned yeah. like 14. Like it's not, yeah, no, that's exactly but, um, right. But, you know, that's kind of how it was. And things started changing where I don't know much about the culture. Then it was very, you know, here's what it is. And everything's very serious. And now there's like, I mean, there's industry stickers. There's like uh, industry just swag and people are wearing shirts and there's hats and there's like pins and like, you know, everything's branded logo wise. And it's like all of a sudden there's this culture where we clean bird poop off windows, but yet we like have such a pride in that now it's like it's this huge like subset industry that is so stinking tight that yeah. i could literally go to any state in the country make a phone call and i got a couch to sleep on like mm -hmm. i can't imagine that being in any other industry yeah. no it's, it's it's we always say this it's it's we're we're like a family yeah and i mean not everybody loves every member of their family so i don't want to you know be pollyanna <laughs> here but i mean right, but right. we are like a family it's like yeah. you know i remember one of the first ones I did once this whole COVID thing started and, you know, I run into you a bunch of times. I've seen you for a few years, you know, whatever you run into yeah. this. Eventually at some point you're going to, you know, you're going to meet my wife. I'm going to meet yours. I'm probably going to see your kids. You're going to see pictures of my kids. This is, and we're small enough where that's literally everybody. Yeah. And so, you know, and then you hear, oh my gosh, you know, you know, Eddie Holder, you know, whatever, one of the owners, he died this year. Yeah. The, the the love and support just from the industry itself to for that kind of a thing and it's like these are competitors in some cases and you know whatever and it, it doesn't matter because yeah this is our family this is this is part of that whole thing and, and you're right it, it's i don't know of any other industry that's like that there probably are some but yeah. this one for sure is is like that and it, it just makes it great it's just a great thing it's like good old home week when you when you go to a show and you run in like that picnic which they don't really do anymore but something will come up yeah. in this place some something, something else you've mentioned too the the pride and the stickers and the you know all of that and the logo thing that's not really changed that pride has always been there it's just now the the generation that likes all that that's what they like before that it was other things yeah, um, yeah. you know working with that kind of stuff so it's it's, and that's, you know, that's the challenge in marketing. It's okay. Make sure you're aware of where this is going because that's who you're going to be talking to because that's what, you know, they're into. And you just need to make sure that you speak the language that makes sense to the people that you're working with. It is the uh, blockbuster empire fall. It's that concept of like, you have to always be adapting, even though when you become the king and you are who everybody compares everybody else to, you still need to innovate. Like you can't, mm -hmm. no one ever gets to that point. Where like, well, I'm done. I guess yeah. that's a, cause then you can only fall from there, right? Sure. Yeah. You sit around, Hey, I'm just going to sit around and collect money. This is cool. You know, that yeah. ends real fast. <laughs> yes. No kidding. And that's kind of, you know, talking about the future. What, what does that look like? Like you said earlier, I thought, and I really, I, I didn't really think of that, but like a handshake, like, okay. IWCA is coming up, right? Uh, by the way, if anybody's watching or listening, IWCA conventions coming up in January, I'll be there. Uh, I don't know if you're going to be at that one or not, but, um, that's one of those things where you see people and you walk up and you, oh, hey, how's it going? And you shake hands. Like, is that, how does that go? Like, how does the future go? Am I going to be wearing masks at everything? Am I yeah. wearing masks in customers' homes forever? Like, how do we know where the future is? What's right? How do we not step on toes, but yet not push the boundaries of 
being too PC, like, where is this future? How many days, how many, how far out can we see in this future, you think? Yeah, right. And, and you know, it's, it's and obviously this threw a monkey wrench into any projection anybody had this Gosh. year, for sure. But, um, yeah, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of like everything. It, it's, you know, what do we do and what is the future and what are the tools we're going to use in the future? And, and it's like, well, one thing we know for sure, there will be windows whenever like yeah. forever because people are not going to want to you're not going to have these virtual screens on blank cement walls in your house that's just people uh, won't deal with that so they're going to want to have windows what are those you know and, and windows get dirty solid surfaces get dirty you're going to need to clean them you know what's the best chemical or surface way to do it or or whatever that's going to change um it, it you know as long as they're making glass the way they're making glass it'll probably be the similar tools maybe adapting slightly you know kind of a thing but you know all of this anything any any kind of job that you do it's it's how much does it cost and how much time does it take to do it yeah and so any in any innovation i don't care what it is you pick one pick any innovation that you think of it was innovated to save time and money those, mm -hmm. those are the, the, the reasons, you know, or resources which translate to money and time and, you know, whatever, yeah. you know, the Tesla electric car, that was an innovation for sure. There's, there's no question the electric car wasn't, that wasn't innovative at all, but the way he did it, did it. And he did it in a way that was cheaper and easier than anybody else. And so found a niche and moved forward. That's what we're going to find yeah. is, is, is we're going to find ways to, okay, it takes you you know, an hour and a half to clean a house inside and out, you know, depending on the size of the house. Okay, well, can I do it? And, you know, that's where pure water cleaning came in. Why well, I can do that in 40 minutes now. Okay, yeah. well, that's good. That's an innovative thing. It's going to cost you a little bit more to get to that 45 minutes. Is that worth it to you? You got to figure that out. But that's what the innovation is going to do. It's, it's always going to be tied to time and money. It's because always. at the end of the day, that's, Unless we're having robots do everything and we just sit around and eat. I don't know what else. <laughs> you know, I don't see that world, at least in my lifetime. So yes. we're always going to have to work for a living. So. It's that uh, Disney movie. Remember where they're all sitting in the little yeah. thing, the hover chairs, and they're just. That was yeah. exactly what I was thinking about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's. Uh, it, but yeah, it's. But yeah, so I mean, so innovation, you know, as far as specifically, it's hard to pinpoint specific yeah. things that are going to happen. But, you know, everything. I don't even. I don't think 2020 is going to, is an innovative year anyway. People are just yeah. so busy running on marbles right now that nobody's yeah. like, nobody's like, I got a great idea for the next. Yeah. It's like, you know what? Let's just get through this year. Yeah. Let's see the, where that gets us. No, that's exactly. And the innovation I think is stuff like this. Yeah. Like you know, not that podcasts are new, not that video things are new, but it's just ways. Okay. So I can't go see you, which we used to do. So we're going to have to find another way to make that kind of thing happen. And so, it's communication, it's marketing. Okay, I can't, people don't go to stores, they can't drive, so we're gonna have to do this via social media, whatever. Yeah. That's the innovation you're seeing this year is, is yeah. everywhere. It's not so much nobody's, I don't wanna say nobody, some people have come up with some innovative things, but most of it is just the way, the way we pretty much live our lives. I, I don't wanna say buy things, but it's even more than that. It's, you know, buying food at this point. I don't even think mm -hmm. to, you know, you go to a restaurant now, they don't give you menus. You, you, if you can even get in the restaurant, it's scan this Scan this and the menu will show up <laughs> on your phone. That's new. That, and then it's not, the technology is not new, but it's widespread now where it wasn't yeah. before. And, and that's, I think that's what our innovation is for this year. Yeah. It's it crazy. I, I think it's going to be interesting to see where, where it goes just in general. Um, it, it's, it's interesting. And I, I know that we've talked a lot about 2020, uh, in past episodes and things like that. And it's just, it goes to be said that uh, things are definitely changing and hopefully changing for the better. And yeah, I really appreciate you you taking the time and, and hanging out with me. I know uh, you're a busy man. Uh, I mean, you're, you're out by the Golden Gate Bridge right now, just relaxing yeah. at the, yeah. at the sun. Like yeah, It's that. a little windy today, but no. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do appreciate that. I, I mean, I always talk about Ettore. You guys know that my all-time favorite squeegee is an Ettore Pro Plus uh, Super System. The, the rubber is the best. Uh, I mean, try it. If you haven't tried Ettore, I'm really, like I said, I don't try to plug things. Um, you know too much but try Ettore rubber it the master rubber will blow you away 
Uh, it will ruin all rubber for you after that fact, but definitely try that. Um, I appreciate you kind of coming on, like I said. And uh, if anybody has any other questions, how can they get a hold of you? How can they talk to Adderay? Give us kind of the contact info. Yeah, sure. The, the easiest way, just so you don't have to remember email addresses, whatever. I mean, obviously our number's listed. I'm in the factory in, in Alameda, which is where we are. Um, easiest way email wise would be, you know, info at adderay.com, or you can even just do that from our website. Um, you just leave a message. It'll get to me. I'm Wayne, or you can just say the guy on the podcast, whatever, that, that they know who I am. Um, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing. And you might actually even get the chairman of the board, Diane, at Ray's daughter. So it's, uh, it's crazy, which is always a plus. She's got a funny, fun personality. Yeah. So. Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Um, by the way, if you're still watching, I do genuinely want to say thank you for watching. Thank you for everything. And more importantly, thank you for buying your supplies through me. If it's something that you do, my number again is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone. Call me, text me, whatever you'd like. I'd love to get your order in. I'd love to get you some Ederay and uh, let you try some of those products too. So definitely let me know what I can do on that side. Uh, give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't had a chance, comment down below. Tell me what your favorite size squeegee is. I want to know. Mine still is an 18. Tending because I had, don't clean so much anymore. Maybe towards a 14 a little easier. But um, still, I'm an 18. That's what I'm going for. Comment down below. Let me know what yours is. Thank you, Wayne, for hanging out with me. Thank you to Ray for uh, taking the time. And until next week, go out there and be epic.